In today's video we will play Wolf of Wall Street because we will use Polygon IO to fetch stock market data. Yeah, so we will use here the API to fetch for example the stock prices from Apple and as this can be a lot of data the data is being returned in paginated responses and I will show you how you can easily fetch that using a generator function. Let's go! I will just make it a little bigger. So what I want to do is I want to fetch the stock price from Apple and what I will get back then is um, the candle price here with opening price, closing price, high and low and I get many results in here because I will get a candle for every minute. Yeah, And because this is a lot of data, this data is being paginated. So with the first query I will get 200 results and with any further query I will get more results. Because um, they have something very very cool here in Polygon, they have a structure where, let me just uh, minimize the results, where you have a next URL. So they tell you then in such a response what is the next URL to fetch the data from. And as said, I'm fetching Apple stock prices in the range of one minute for, for a day here. And uh, they will tell me, okay, where can I get the next 200 minutes? Yeah, And um, Usually, usually it looks like this. Um, I have a response schema here that I created with Zot. By the way, I recommend you to uh, check out my previous video because there I explained how you can turn a JSON into a Zot schema just by using the website transform.tools. Yeah, that will allow you to get this out of the box here. You will have then such a response schema. And uh, I'm having a code that fetches this data here. And that code is fairly simple. It uh, creates a new URL instance here with the address, the initial address. Then it adds the API key to the URL and a limit of 200 because it fetches in 200 batches or in batches of 200. And then it gets back the response. It uh, gets the JSON part of the response and then parses it with the schema from Zot to have then a validated payload that is being returned in the end. I also have the initial URL already here. Yeah, so I'm fetching data from this day to this day. So only for one day. And I have an API key that you cannot use because <laughs> I already invalidated it. Um, because when you watch that video, that's already like after I invalidated it. So <laughs> don't try to trick me here. And um, it works like this, that I have to keep track of the next URL. Yeah, because we see that this is important to know because uh, it will tell us where we get our next batch from. Yeah, and then um, I have to iterate through um, the fetch data here and I have to update my next URL. Yeah, like uh, with every call, I need to make sure to update the next URL until there is no more next URL. And I will then uh, run into yeah uh, an undefined value. Then I know that I reached the end of um, the available data. Okay, then let's uh, start it to see if it works. NPM start. And we will get to see something very interesting. Uh, I'm logging here, by the way, uh, how many results we get. Yeah, the results uh, uh, is this here, uh, is this array. And I'm logging how many results we get and what is the next URL. And we see we get 200 and the, the next URL, 200, next URL, uh, 200, next URL, 200, next URL. Then a Zot error is being thrown because um, the next URL is then undefined, yeah? I told you that the next URL will only be there if there is a next batch, and if there's none, it's not there. So this is what I also have to uh, make sure about in the schema. So in the schema, I also need to uh, add an optional here because it can be optional. Yeah, I didn't do that in the first place because um, I generated it from transform.tools, and of course, transform.tools um, got this as an input and from there you cannot see that this can be optional. 
but we just experienced it. So that being said, let's continue. Yeah, so this is uh, how, how it would work. And what I don't like about this approach is that you have to keep track of the next URL. Yeah, so you have to have knowledge about the context and about the internals of this endpoint here. And you can put that away and black box it by using generators. And this is what we are going to do now. So just one more execution to really prove that uh, this uh, works now. Yeah, we have 200, 200, 200, 200, and then a final 18 and an undefined next URL. Yeah, so this is our starting point. And now let's turn this together into a generator function. To turn this into a generator function, we first of all have to use the generator uh, syntax. And that means we have to add um, an asterisk here. Yeah, that makes uh, the function a generator function. By the way, um, by the specification, you can also have spaces here in between. Yeah, that wouldn't matter. It will still um, return here um, a generator. Yeah, that's why we also get the TypeScript error because it expects now a generator. But um, I like to have the asterisk next to the function keyword. So let's do it like this. Then uh, as shown, this thing here doesn't return a promise any longer, but an async generator. So we will just copy the type here, put it in there, and then uh, we have um, the correct uh, response uh, or return type. Then we also need to change uh, return to yield, yeah, because that's the keyword being used in a generator to return data. And the next step is um, very, very important because uh, we will move our pagination logic inside this function. Yeah? And that's also what I want to um, achieve with the generator function. Yeah, I don't want to have the pagination logic in here. Yeah, I want to encapsulate it here in the generator function. So we know that we need to keep track of the next URL. Yeah, so that's probably what we also need to move then here inside of our generator. So we can say if we have a next URL, then we will set URL to new URL with that uh, next URL. Otherwise, we'll set URL to undefined. Now, of course, we will get uh, some errors because URL is a constant. We need to change that using the let keyword. Then we have this uh, addressed. Then we'll have to use, of course, the past next URL. And we have to make sure that undefined is a valid type. Yeah, currently URL is uh, typed with URL, but we have to say that it can be URL or undefined. Yeah, then this, this line here is cool. And we have to do all of this as long as we have a URL. Yeah, so we have to put a while here, while our URL is not undefined, yeah, while it is defined, we do all of this here. Yeah, so we add the API key, the limit, we fetch, we yield the response, and we update our next URL. Yeah, this is what we are doing. Um, and then when URL becomes undefined, this case here is then being exited, and uh, we will no longer fetch data. This allows us now to do the final step here. First of all, we can get rid of keeping track of the next URL outside um, this uh, generator function. And then we can use the generator. So we can say const data generator equals, and then we um, use the fetch data. We pass it our address, our initial address which was the resource here and the API key. And then we change the while to a for await. So we say for await and then const chunk of our data generator. Now we'll have the chunk available. So we can lock the chunk and we don't have to update the next URL because this is being done already in our generator. I find this approach here 
much cleaner because we can now export our generator function and reuse it easily without keeping track uh, all the time of the next URL in uh, all the places we use it. And we can, of course, then also change our for await to a specific uh, amount, yeah, so that we can say only for five times we want to fetch. Yeah, this is all up to the using code and the consuming code. But the providing code is nicely encapsulated here in the generator function and um, does uh, what it is supposed to do without the need of every consumer to know how it internally works. Yeah, the consumers just need to know how often they want to call it. So I will execute this now to see that it is really like uh, doing the same as before. Yeah, it fetches uh, 200 results, logs then here the next URLs. We can see that by the timestamp being updated and then it reaches the final 18 with an undefined. So we received all the data. By the way, here's how I created the Zot schema. I just went to transform.tools and there I entered JSON to Zot. And then I pasted the payload of the first uh, response, which was not JSON to Zot schema, but uh, this one here. And then I got it here and I used the settings to name it response schema confirmed it and had then here the final constant that I used.